this is the lab where we started investigating MRSA in 1995. This is Dr. Francois Pedro Remington, a professor emerita at the University of California, San Francisco Medical School. As a professor of clinical microbiology, she founded and until recently headed up the Molecular Epidemiology Research Laboratory located in San Francisco General Hospital. A chief of bacterial intelligence, so to speak. In fact, the French-born and German-trained microbiologist has been compared to Sherlock Holmes for her work on the mysteries of life-threatening bacteria. Every day is something new coming up. So, and the puzzle gets, um, gets solved day by day, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> Investigating the new drug-resistant germs, she and her team began by collecting and storing highly resistant microorganisms identified in the clinical microbiology lab, including samples of MRSA strains. They came from jails and walk-in clinics where more and more people had begun showing up with unusual skin infections. We have collected all MRSA strains from the Community Health Network of San Francisco, which explains why our collection is so big. Big, as in more than 10,000 samples of MRSA alone, and all of them are stored in this freezer. Dr. Remington gives us a close-up look at some of the potentially lethal bacteria. These four plates represent cultures from four different patients. One of these colony contains at least 100 million cells in one of these little dots. So plates like these probably contains trillions of bacteria. The scientist and her team analyzed each culture to create genetic fingerprints that look like strips of barcode. What they found in March of 2001 were the fingerprints of a new kind of fast-spreading, virulent, and drug-resistant form of staph that originated in the community. It's known as USA 300. It has spread all over the country and Canada and has recently been identified in eight European countries. In rare cases, it can be deadly. It first showed up in the lab as just one of 15 specimens on a standard computer readout, but that soon changed. The more samples we um, processed, the greater the proportion of USA 300. So we then knew that we are in trouble. The discovery of the strain was an enormous breakthrough. Soon, other scientists were reporting it from all over the country. After we realized the importance of it and the fact that it spread all over the country, we realized that we needed the whole genome sequence. Dr. Bean Deep has been working with Dr. Remington since 2000 when he was an undergraduate student. He recalls the excitement as they mapped the DNA of USA 300. Over a 12-month period, we, got, we obtained funding um, recruit the people and sequence the genome of this bacteria to define its genetic uh, basis for resistance and publish it all in a 12-month period. So that was uh, a really fun time. Three, seven, five, seven. <laughs> this is a specimen used to analyze the genome sequence. Dr. Remington chose the specific strain because it was the most resistant USA 300 that she had in the collection. She called the strain FPR 3757, with FPR short for Francois Pedro Remington. She smiles when we ask her how it felt to have a potentially lethal bacterium as a namesake. I worked 35 years with staff. I think I know them pretty well and I really enjoy them and I thought, you know, why not? Dr. Remington says she loves the detective part of her work. Once a linguist, then a clinical microbiologist, and now a scientist and world expert on MRSA, she draws inspiration from many fields. It's using genetics, it's using microbiology, it's using infectious diseases, and um, it's just a wonderful way to um, combine these three things. And there's always something new. I mean, it's, you never know what comes out when you stay in a gel. So, and that's true for MRSA, but that's true for many other organisms we work with, um, none of which has been as successful, thank God, as MRSA.